Hey there, fellow PC enthusiasts! It's Matits from EK, and no, my parents obviously never thought I'd have to pronounce my name in English in front of the cameras. But here I am once again, and this time talking about AIOs and all the things you should and shouldn't do if you're using an all-in-one liquid cooling solution. But first, back to basics. What is an AIO? The AIO stands for an all-in-one. It's a liquid cooling solution that offers all benefits of water cooling in a compact, easy to install and maintenance-free design. Every AIO unit consists of a CPU water block, pump, radiator with fans, tubes, fittings, all neatly packed in one box. And every EK AIO comes with a universally compatible CPU water block and a pre-filled pump and reservoir combo unit. Our all-in-one liquid cooling solutions are ready to go straight out the box. In other words, they're simple, efficient and easy to use. Now let's talk about the do's. Do upgrade your cooling solution with an AIO. Switching from the stock cooling to an AIO will give you lower temperatures while producing substantially less noise. Also, you'll get a potential performance boost and an awesome new look for your PC. Since your PC will be working at lower temperatures, it will get more room to boost higher and for longer periods of time. Lower temperatures also mean a longer lifespan. And with our 5-year warranty for these products, complete peace of mind is guaranteed. Do check the size, because it matters. The first thing to do when choosing an AIO is to check your PC case for the radiator size it can accommodate. Usually a simple visit to your PC case manufacturer's webpage can give you all the necessary details. What you are looking for is information on the maximum radiator size your case supports. It's typically found under specifications, cooling support or something similar. Just keep in mind that space for three 120mm fans does not always mean the case can accommodate a radiator with fans so be sure it's specified for radiators. And as always, if you can't find the radiator specifications for your PC case, feel free to contact our support team. They'll be more than happy to help you and make sure you get the correct info. Do get the biggest possible AIO. Once you have all the relevant information on your PC case, it's time to decide which AIO size to go for. Remember, the bigger is always better. Installing the AIO with the biggest possible radiator that can fit inside your case is the way to go. Now, some of you might ask if more fans means more noise. The answer is actually a no. The bigger radiator surface and more fans mean that the heat can be dissipated at a lower fan speeds, which in turn translates to even quieter operation. Do check the CPU socket support. Although AIOs are designed to fit as many CPU sockets as possible, it's always recommended to check if the particular AIO is compatible with your CPU. Of course, EK's brand new Nucleus AIO fits all the mainstream sockets. While older EK AIO versions do not support the latest LGA 1700 socket out of the box, we do offer upgrade kits almost free of charge. The AM5 socket, on the other hand, is supported out of the box. Do follow the manual when installing the AIO. Always follow the installation guide, preferably the one by EK, as it has all the information you need. Pay close attention to the order of assembly, which is also graphically illustrated in easy-to-follow steps. Make sure to properly tighten the pump unit to the motherboard in a cross pattern, and pay attention to the AIO's radiator placement and orientation. Radiator placement with tube orientation is crucial. As there's always air inside the AIO, the pump inside the cooler must not be positioned as the topmost element of the loop. With a properly placed radiator, the air will be trapped inside the radiator and chamber as it should. Also, the pump will run silently and won't make a burbling noise. Do set it up properly. AOs can be set up according to your needs. The fan and pump speeds can be adjusted to produce minimal noise. For example, if the temperature is low, during some less demanding work, you can set up the fans to run at lower speeds. The same can be done for your pump, ultimately making your PC super silent. Typically, the fan speeds can be managed through the BIOS menu. Just check where the PWM cable from the fans and the pump is plugged in, then set up the same PWM header. A simple speed curve that rises with the temperature will do. Do use a CPU fan header. Connect the 4-pin fan connector from the extension cable directly to your CPU fan header on the motherboard. Whenever possible, use a CPU fan header for the AIO fan PWM cable. Do maintenance. 
And now you're wondering why AIOs are said to be maintenance free. Well, they are and they aren't. While you don't need to change the coolant or perform tasks similar to custom loop maintenance, you still need to clean the dust from the radiator and fans. Dust buildup will lower your AIO's performance, so make sure to remove that dust every now and then. Now that we're done with the do's, let's tackle the big don'ts of AIO use. Do not mount the AIO incorrectly. We've seen this picture from the installation manual and it's been talked about a lot. Let's see what it actually means. Since there's a tiny bit of air inside the AIO, which is perfectly normal and has been accounted for with the AIO design, we cannot mount the AIO wherever we want. The CPU cooler must be installed so it's lower than the radiator with the tubing pointing up. This prevents the air inside the radiator and chamber from reaching the pump and stays trapped inside the radiator. Air is not a friend of the pump and can cause premature defects and pump failure. Do not let the AIO operate if the pump emits an air burbling sound. While having some air inside the AIO is completely normal, it's not normal to have it inside the pump. So if you hear the pump burbling due to the presence of air, even though your radiator is correctly placed inside the case, you need to do some fixing. But don't fret, it's quite an easy process. Simply set the pump speed at 100% and tilt the case so the pump is at the lowest point while the tubing is pointing upwards. This way the air can easily travel up towards the radiator. Now that may take a couple of tries, but we're sure you've got this. Do not install the radiator without all the fans. The radiator needs to be fully covered with the included fans. If, for example, there are only two fans installed on the 360 AIO with a 3-fan radiator, the performance will decrease drastically because the air will not be properly pushed through the radiator, with that same air circulating the fans. Do not open your AIO. Seriously, just don't. AIOs are built to last without the need to replace the coolant inside and are not to be opened for maintenance. They are simply not designed to be opened and opening them will result in damaged unit and voided warranty. Do not get an AIO that is too small. If you have a high-end CPU with high TDP and plan to do an overclock, do not get the small AIO. If there is no space for the bigger AIO, consider getting a bigger case, as that will enable you to install a bigger AIO and get the performance you wish for. Here's a shit that can help you with this. Do not settle for less than what you deserve, because you're worth it. Get an EK AIO as our products have top-tier performance, superb design, many hardware awards, and offer simple installation with a universally compatible CPU water block. And did we mention the five-year international warranty? I think we did, but just to make sure you didn't miss it. You need a liquid cooling AIO product and EK has got you covered. Do not take any chances. If in doubt about any aspect of choosing or installing your AIO, feel free to contact our customer support. That's it for today's Basics of Liquid Cooling episode. If you like this content and find it helpful, we have another do for you. Do check out our YouTube channel for more similar shows and find us on social media platforms. Until next time, Matits over and out.